In this video, we are going to go from Zoom users to Zoom Pro users. We're gonna run down ways to keep your Zoom secure, keep it safe, keep it organized, and come up with some really cool features that might create a more engaging learning environment for your classroom today. Hey everybody, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and thank you for checking out this video. We're gonna go through Zoom because I know most of you are using that platform. I've been using Zoom for a number of years to conduct different types of teleconferencing webinars, to be able to facilitate learning across the globe. And today I find many of you are in my situation. You have a classroom and you are trying to use Zoom to be effective, but there are some challenges the way that Zoom is built by default. Zoom is a enterprise solution. And so the enterprise solution is going to always function differently than a education solution. There are COP and SIPA issues, there are privacy issues, the way in which data is shared, save access, etc. And I've just heard some really horrible things about people not having their Zoom classrooms secure and then they are Zoom bombed, which is now a new term that might be the, the word of the year next year for, uh, for the Webster Dictionary, right? And it's simple and we're gonna run through it and we're gonna do it right now and it's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be quick and you're gonna be in no time up in your game with the Zoom. So let's get into it. So this is the way I do scheduling and I think that it works really well. So you're going to schedule a class and here you are going to set up the topic, right? Which I'll just call the Tech Rabbis Classroom. That's what we'll call it. Okay, Tech Rabbis Classroom. Now I can set this up based on my schedule. I can say, okay, period one, you're gonna have your classroom, period two, and I'm gonna be jumping over this way and that way and I gotta remember which way, what, what time is it? Because time just keeps on ticking and there's no bell schedule. If you have a bell schedule set up at your house, please message me on Twitter so you can show me how you set that up. In the meantime, if you don't have that, I recommend you doing the following. You're going to set a room that starts when you start. So if you start teaching at eight or 9 a.m., you're going to set it to start at 9 a.m. So you go over here and you say 9 a.m., okay, 9 a.m. And you're going to let your classroom close at 3 p.m. Whenever you're done teaching, whenever you're done with office hours, the maximum potential time that your classroom might be conducted in any given day. So you're gonna do that and then you're going to set it at reoccurring. And so what that's gonna let you do is, it's going to set it reoccurring in that time scope. So every day I know I have just one link and I can get in and my students can get in and it's one link. It is my personal meeting ID. Each one of us has a unique ID. Mine's blurred out so that anyone who's watching this doesn't get a wild idea to potentially Zoom bomb me. So that's why that's blurred out. Now, an extra layer of security is you can require a password that you can change at any time. And the cool thing about the personal meeting is instead of using the generate automatically, which is a burn, link, it's just gonna change every time. So if I decide, oh, I don't, I don't want that password or I don't know how to turn the password off, you just delete the reoccurring meeting and you start over and it's really great and it really works and no one's gonna know the difference because it's your personal meeting ID, it's that unique link for you. Click that, automat um, that, that advanced option setting here. I think that's super important because the advanced option is going to give you a couple things. Now, if you're watching this video after April 2nd, so you're in luck because Zoom automatically pushed out an update that is going to go live April 2nd that's going to make waiting room default. And that's really important because that's going to prevent unwanted people from coming into your classroom. And if you're setting up a classroom that is running throughout the entire day, which I just think is way simpler, if kids get in early, you can have them in that waiting room and you don't have to worry about them coming in and just barging into the class because you're controlling who gets access to that. Um, you know, as I said before, the password, um, it's, it's easy for students to password change, but you can deal with disciplinary action if students are Zoom bombing uh, other classes, but outside people that have gained access to your Zoom room 
through uh, you publicly posting it somewhere and didn't realize you know, how far and how wide the internet actually is. You can enable or not enable join before host. So I would never have that on. There's no reason for anybody to be in the room before I am. Just let them be at the waiting room and they can chill. And then you can automatically record the meeting on the local computer so that you can then share that later. So mute participants on entry, absolutely. They should be muted once they come in and it'll just keep the decorum of the room a little calmer and you can then greet the students and then they can unmute themselves if they need to. And then you click schedule and you would be good to go. So I'm not gonna schedule this right now because I already have one that is scheduled. As you can see over here, I have my Tech Rabbi Classroom that's always reoccurring there. And if I create little sub meetings, those would be here as well if I scheduled those. Now we're gonna make a new meeting, right? You join the meeting and you're going to be able to do a couple things, okay? So we have set up that not just anybody can get into the classroom right away. So that's step one of being safe. So even if the password did get leaked, password is of course extra security, you can keep it simple, but you wanna make sure that we have as many layers of security as possible. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go next to my screen share option and I'm going to click this up arrow advanced settings and I'm going to make sure that only the host can share when are your students going to need to share when you want them to share so don't give them the opportunity and one of the things that has happened is the zoom bombing is somebody coming in to a classroom or into some sort of, of, of room whether it's all adults or kids who it doesn't really they don't discriminate they go in they show something graphic explain deny of course so you could set that up as well okay now with the chat you can actually open up the chat. I just click the click the chat, right? That little icon. And now you have an option here. You click those three dots. The three dots, you can set it up. No one can chat, which why would you do that? Host only, which I have as default. Host only is great because they can communicate back and forth with you. There's no real reason for them to need to chat amongst one another because there's other ways for them to engage with each other in a classroom environment that's just, it's not that it's controlled, it's just organized. So you can definitely have publicly everyone talking and publicly and privately everybody talking. You can have both of those off and just host only. Somebody starts throwing ra um, inappropriate racial, vulgar, uh, vulgar um, text at you, you just boot them out and they can't join again. So you, you can set that up. now mute all right I just clicked mute all and it says allow participants to unmute themselves uncheck that and continue now they're muted and they can't unmute themselves so you have full control and then you're able to conduct your classroom in a way that is just orderly as I said before so now you can deliver that lecture that intro hi how are you doing great to see you and then guess what we're gonna be able to go into that process now of you really sort of as as revolutionary as a video chat can be, we're gonna try to do some really cool things right now. So this is what we're gonna do. We are going to check out the breakout rooms. So what's really cool about the breakout rooms is that you can set the breakout rooms as pair learning. You could do it as a small group. You could do it as split the class in the middle. Whatever it is, you can decide 30 participants, okay? Am I gonna have one classroom? Two, three, four, five, six, right? All the way up to the point where you could have 15 and they could do pair and share and you're able to then bounce around. This is really awesome, right? So you create those and then it would have assigned automatically there are actually people in the room and then you're able to set up a sign if someone came in late you can assign them and then it lets you bounce around the rooms right so you can hit those that option okay move all participants to breakout rooms automatically allow participants to return to the main session at any time and then the breakout rooms are going to close after you know one minute it gives them voice, it gives them choice, it gives them agency, and it's just super rad that you could have that moment where they're like, hey, can we do that again? So I think that we have covered everything. In less than 15 minutes, you have potentially gone from a Zoom user to a Zoom Pro user. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. As I said before, if you like this video, like it. If you like this video, share it. If you like this video, subscribe, because guess what? We're all quarantined right now, and I have time to start pumping out content around different technology tools that I think can create meaningful and creative community for your classroom today. So thanks for watching, and have an awesome one.